हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल सो अर्लियर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द बायो रेमेडिएशन टॉपिक एंड इन दैट वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट टू टेक्निक्स ऑफ इन सी टू मैथड दैट इज़ द इंट्रेंसिक मैथड एंड द इंजीनियर्ड मैथड सो कंटिन्यूइंग विद द टाइप्स ऑफ इन सी टू मैथड्स टूडे वी विल बी गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द फॉलोइंग दैट इज द फॉर अनदर टाइप इज बायो वेंटिंग दैट इज इट इज़ अ टाइप ऑफ इन सी टू टेक्निक सो इट इज़ डिजाइंड primarily to treat the soil contamination that is happened by the action of the fuels okay non halogenated volatile organic compounds that is vocs that is they do not contain halogen like fluorine chlorine and semi volatile that is svocs pesticides and the herbicides so basically this method is useful for the treatment of these pollutants it is an aerobic process that is involving air supply or we can say the presence of oxygen while minimizing the volatilization and the release of contaminants to the atmosphere so basically very less uh, amount of the contaminants are released into the atmosphere by this process so this is a diagram representing the bioventing process here this is the area that is we can say the contaminated soil the water table beneath that above is the ground surface so here um, air injection is provided that is it needs the air supply by the blower and air flow happens in that direction then the monitoring point here and injection of other nutrients that are required for by the microorganisms for their proper growth etc then another method is biostimulation that is it is a technique for the treatment of सब सरफेस रीजन बाय द एडिशन ऑफ वाटर बेस्ड सोल्यूशंस कैरियंग न्यूट्रेंट्स इलेक्ट्रॉन एसेप्टर्स कपलिंग बायो स्टिमुलेशन प्रोसेस विद द एडवांस्ड टूल एंड टेक्निक्स एनहेंस इज द बायो रिमेडिएशन प्रोसेस तो बेसिकली बायो स्टिमुलेशन एनहेंस द बायो रिमेडिएशन प्रोसेस विद द यूज ऑफ इट्स टूल्स एंड टेक्निक्स दैट आर मोर एडवांस्ड एज कंपेयर टू अनदर टेक्नोलॉजीज so this is a diagram representing bio stimulation here a contaminant is present electron acceptor whether it is this or whether it is electron donor in nature and oxygen is required required also nutrients that is nitrogen and phosphorus that is given to microbes for their proper growth that is they require correct ph correct temperature for their activity of uh, remediation and in the last they release h2o and co2 as a by product in that process now air sparsing this is another method so it applies to the contaminated ground water by injecting air below the water table so it is designed to treat the ground water contamination that is happened by vocs svocs pesticides and the herbicides so this is the diagram representing air sparsing or we can say the bio sparsing method here air is injected this is the ground surface that is used for treatment of the uh, ground uh, we water we can say and beneath that that is the beneath the water table air is injected okay contamination took place here and here microbial degradation process will took place now bio augmentation so introduction of a group of natural microbial strains or a genetically engineered variant to treat the contaminated water or the soil so here basically whether natural strains of microorganisms or genetically engineered are applied so there is a better chance of treatment of whether of contaminated water or the soil so this is a basically simple diagram representing the process of bio augmentation here the contaminants are present then a natural microorganism or whether genetically modified microorganisms are added and they convert the contaminants into non toxic and products beneath the ground surface or also on the ground natural attenuation so it uses natural processes to contain the spread of the contamination and to reduce the concentration and the amount of the pollutants at the contaminated sites then phytoremediation so it uses plants for the treatment or we can say the mineralization of pollutants it involve that is pollutants can be taken up inside the plant tissues that is this process is known as phyto extraction then 
absorbed in the roots that is it is known as rhizofiltration and transformed by the plant enzymes that is phytotransformation and degraded by the microbes in the root zone so it is known as rhizo remediation so it is used for remediation of toxic heavy metals radionuclides chlorinated solvents non aromatic petroleum hydrocarbons that are present near the plant surface so again this is the in situ method that is as purging phytoremediation bioventing biostimulation and, and natural attenuation then the ex situ methods so it is applied to the soil and ground water at the site which has been removed via excavation so ex situ bioremediation involve the removal of the waste materials and their collection at a place to facilitate the microbial degradation so basically it is not an on site remediation process it involves the remediation at another place so xc2 bioremediation technology include most of the disadvantages and limitations it also suffers from the cost that is associated with the solid handling process that is the handling of the solid waste basically so on the basis of the phases of the contaminated material under the treatment that is what sort of contaminated material is there ex situ bioremediation is classified into two that is solid phase treatment including the uh, we can say land treatment and the soil pile treatment and the slurry phase treatment system involves the treatment of the solid liquid suspension that is in bioreactor that it is happens in bioreactors so first is the solid phase treatment so solid phase system include organic waste like leaf animal manure and the agricultural waste and the problematic waste so example domestic and the industrial waste sewage sludge and the municipal solid waste are used here so the traditional clean up practice or we can say the technology involves the informal processing of the processing of the organic material and the production of compost which may be used as a soil amendment that is it can be later used for amendment of the soil that is whether if a soil is uh, very um, less in nutrients so this soil can be used for the enhancement of the soil then again it will become nutrient rich then the second method is composting so composting is a self healing substrate dense managed microbial system and one solid phase biological treatment technology which is suitable to treatment of large amount of contaminated solid material okay bioremediation of the contaminated substrate from the soil support of the microbial self heating needs incorporation of proper amount of supplements are possible due to the composting of hazardous waste so hazardous compounds reported to disappear through composting okay includes what are the materials that disappear by this process that is the aliphatic and the aromatic hydrocarbons and certain halogenated compounds so basically compost is also useful in case of hazardous waste material treatment also so this is a diagram that is here compost is prepared by perforated pipe diffused bed and the blower by which air is supplied so this is a diagram representing the outline of the composting treatment sequence that is how a compost is prepared from a waste so first of all a contaminated material is selected then its size reduction took place by another method then the inorganic nutrients organic amendment adding of water bulking agent is added ph is adjusted and also at this site inoculum that is a microorganisms from another bioremediated site is added here then initial mixing will took place that is composting treatment water is added and also some amendment that is basic conditions for the growth of microorganisms are provided here then curing then screening then the decontaminated material is obtained again bulking agent and it will act as an inoculum source also that is it will be later used in another compost method and the final use we can say or the disposal is prepared here
and at last the slurry phase treatment so the contaminated solid material that is soil or degraded sediment microorganisms and water is formulated into the slurry are brought within a bioreactor or a biofermenter air provide oxygen for the bacterial growth slurry phase reactors are new design in for bioremediation so this is a slurry phase lacoon here water suspenser surface aerator mixture that is solid sludge sediment mixture is here microbial inoculum is added here for the growth of the microorganisms and nutrients are also added and at last the factors affecting bioremediation so energy sources bioavailability that is what sort of contaminant is available to that particular microorganisms bioactivity that is the activity of the microorganisms and the biochemistry that they possess the ph temperature toxicity of the compound or we can say the contaminant water content and the geological character nutrient availability which is important for the growth of microorganism and the external electron availability also then there are some merits of the bioremediation method it is effective economical as it is low cost eco friendly no proof we can say it will not create any sort of pollution less toxic by product generation that is h2o or co2 is basically generated here on site treatment possible as in case of in situ method does not affect the natural flora that are present at a surface then there are some demerits also first is more effective for the readily biodegradable compounds that is if a compound is made biodegradable by certain other activities then it will be more effective otherwise direct biodegradation is not possible in case of that also another demerit is specific environmental conditions are required by the microorganisms specific microflora are required and long time required to remove or transform the contaminants so in conclusion what we can say is bioremediation enhances the natural biodegradation and the cleans the polluted environment understanding the microbial communities and their response to what the natural environment and the pollution and then enhancing the knowledge of the genetics of the microbes to increase their capability to degrade the pollutants conduct field trials of new bioremediation techniques it then is the need of the r so basically we have to work upon these factors so that bioremediation process will become more uh, efficient and it will lead to more conversion or the transformation of more pollutant or the more contaminated forms into less toxic forms so yeah this is all about the topic of bioremediation hope you will like my video and if you like my video please do like share and subscribe to my channel